Okay. And the other talk that I got to see was my dear, dear friends. Uh, Rodrigo, I always forget how to say your last name. It's, and I'm just going to butcher it. It is like literally 12, 15 at night. So Rodrigo S. He's from out of the box language. It's fantastic. And Sergio Pantoja, obviously. And their talk was five tips to help students succeed in high level proficiency exams. Um, yeah, I consider these two kind of <laughs> my go-tos. Uh, so there, there's uh, kind of those people that are known for very specific things, and Sergio and Hondrigo are, are for sure known for um, exam prep and language development for teachers. Um, I have actually taken one of Sergio's courses, um, and I enjoyed it because it was a dialogue about language analysis interpretation of language and I think that that's really important to have and we had an amazing group though we were deemed the hooligans um well I did give us this name because we were there was a group of four of us that were just troublemakers and Sergio didn't really know what to do with us I think he had a good time though but we were inappropriate <laughs> to say the least um so their talk was mainly aimed at teachers who were preparing students for exams, but also for um, teachers who are preparing themselves for um, higher level exams like the CAUCP. So they gave the five tips. I'm going to go through those and the examples that they gave. Um, let's see. So um, the first one was developing task awareness. There was an example of, oh, hang on, getting random notifications here. Um, so there was an example of a listening task, which was for specific information. And um, they gave some tips on what to do before and the listening and strategies. And one of the biggest um, pitfalls that uh, Rodrigo pointed out was that people mainly in his uh, in his experience, and he has a lot of it, so we can trust his experience, um, it was that um, they paraphrase a lot in these types of um, in these types of activities. And so when uh, doing that, and most students have have difficulty doing this, I'm trying to plug my computer in so that you guys can actually have a full episode here. Uh, <laughs> Getting a little late. Um, hold on one second. Okay, computer is not going to die now. And let's just move you right back to where you were. Okay. Oh, God. Oh, there we go. Um, so the example was to uh, do the listening exercises and then. Um, because of the paraphrasing, which is something that students usually have some some difficulties with, to use the the tape script to find parallels so that they can start recognizing some patterns and identifying parallels of the, what the original source and the the paraphrasing. The next one was vocabulary development. Um, is a I can't read my writing. I'm so sorry. Oh, okay. Vocabulary development is a critical part of reading success. Um, Sergio, yeah, I believe it was him, uh, referenced uh, Lawfer in 1997, which uh, he put out what that lexicon or yeah, lexicon development is best is the best predictor of success in terms of reading. So, um, and one of the things, and this is why I do love Sergio, I love them both, um, but he was talking about new combinations of words that they already know. And so most of the time, it's not that the word is new, it's that they're see students are seeing it in, in new combinations. He also um, showed us his, his weird, he's, he, he, he's very, very nice, but he's a little crazy too, because he collects old course books. So, you know, we know that this person is not, Sergio knows that I'm joking with him. Um, but, uh, so he had one that was a preparatory book for proficiency and the proficiency book from 1986, I believe it was, had over 300 pages. 
and the newest proficiency from the University of Cambridge. I think it's a 2012 edition. I'm not sure on the date. Sorry, I didn't write down. Um, had 177 pages. And so obviously, you know, we need to shrink things and make them smaller and, and condense everything. Um, but more than likely, uh, that huge reduction by almost half is probably going to limit the vocabulary and the Lexus that the, the learners are exposed to. So um, developing their vocabulary is, is really going to help with the reading portion, the reading success. The third one was interactive communication and Turk taking for natural exchanges. We actually, um, Rodrigo let us do a little activity together, Zinos, and um, it was nice. We did the kind of like a, I mean, I, it's, you know, the, the Cambridge suite test, the talking, you know, where you have the map and you have the talking point in the middle, and then they have some ideas that float around it. Um, and uh, uh, they did give a good tip here that uh, Sally Burgess, 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 I think, uh, in 2000, her book in 2005 is How to Teach for Exams. And it has quite, it's, I mean, it's a reference for anybody who teaches for exams, but it's, it's quite good. Um, so there are some things that happen in natural conversations and normal conversations in terms of turn taking and being able to, to, speak to each other so there's hesitation there's indications you want to speak and um there you know kind of connecting uh what the your partner has last said into the what you're saying so there's there's quite a few and um on the c2cpe rubric for for grading there is an interactive communication in the exam criteria and so your students are being judged on this. So for the speaking part of the test, they really should be comfortable with, with looking at doing the task as an interaction, not as I need to just say what I need to say and not listen to this person because that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a genuine interaction. So if your students are having trouble with turn-taking types of stuff, then that's probably something that they need to do or work on. Um, number four was meaning used pronunciation, pretty much language analysis. <laughs> um, and uh, Sergio said, become friends with the dictionary. Now, I'm not going to become friends with the dictionary, but <laughs> uh, but yes, I, I understand exactly what he's trying to say here. So um, the example that he used was the difference between um, refuse and refuse. Uh, so one is obviously to object to something in the verb form and the noun form is trash, garbage. Um, and he cited a, an author called Baker in 2014 that really put the emphasis on the learners taking ownership of the, of the process um, and going through and looking at the dictionary and looking at these uh, pronunciation things and, and, and in trying to trying to deal with that so uh, doing good language analysis but also having your students have all the information that would come from a good language analysis is probably key <sighs> almost done <laughs> last one uh, number five was the principle of least effort <laughs> uh, so we have to fight against the easy taking the easiest way um, what did I put Need to exemplify. Oh, right. So when you're taking these tests, the the tendency or the the inkling might be to just ignore, um, do it the, in the fastest, most express way possible. I guess we can say. But in these tests, um, especially when you're taking high level proficiency tests, um, it's your time to shine. Kind of, uh, you, you need to be able to exemplify what your level is. And so the only way that you can do that is by showing a wide variety, depth, breadth of, of language. So um, don't fall into the trap of doing something just to get the, the test done, but uh, doing something with a little bit higher quality that really shows what exactly you were um, aiming for. 
Um, so these two are fantastic. And I do know that both this is a shameless plug because they're lovely people and I've gotten to know them over the years and I think they're just wonderful. Um, both of them do offer language development courses and um, test preparatory courses. So if you are interested in either of those um, and and you want somebody who really, really knows what they're doing and has a lot of experience, uh, Rodrigo is at out of the box language um, on Instagram. Uh, I think the logo is like pink and blue if I can remember it, like a, it's a box I think it's pink and blue uh don't quote me on that and then um that's his company so that's that's him and Sergio Pantoja I think is just Sergio Pantoja EFT or something along those lines so if you search for Sergio you'll find him too and they're always advertising for their courses so if you're interested in language development please 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 get in touch with them um because they had 45 minutes <laughs> they did go over by like five five or six minutes. So they had 50 minutes, um, but they did give five very useful tips. Um, and so it just shows that they have quite a lot of experience doing this. Um, so again, that's uh, Rodrigo and Sergio, and they did five tips to help students succeed in high level proficiency exams. The one thing I do want to mention here was, <laughs> Kelly, you're like, why are you, you, I don't really prep people. I don't, I don't do this, but um, what I wanted to do when I, when I sat for this, this talk was I was interested in seeing from the academic perspective what the demand is for high level proficiency and kind of translate that into the business world to see if there is, a, is if it's comparable or not. Um, and so I'm going to look a little bit more into it and pick the brains of my dear friends, Rodrigo and Sergio, uh, to see if this is isolated to academic English testing and uh, if it ever translates into other areas, uh, specific areas like business English, for example. Um, so that's it uh, for the talk. But please, if you are a teacher and you're looking for language development courses or um, test preparation courses, please contact them. And I'm done for the night. It's about 1230. So I need to go to bed uh, because I will be presenting my last talk tomorrow and I'm quite excited about it. Um, and that's it. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.